Welcome to another episode of Bottom of the Stream with Adam and Nick. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome aboard. It's the weekly news and chat show from the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. Adam, how are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? Stupendous. You don't look it. Okay. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're the second person who's told me that today. <laughs> my, when I got to work today, my wife said to me, she rang me and said, are you okay? And I said, yeah. And she went, I'm just checking because you look like death warmed up this morning. <laughs> oh, bless her. At least she's checking in on you. At least she cares. Bit she's, of a cold. She's very caring if sometimes cold will win. <laughs> Nick's got his sexy husky voice <laughs> on this week. Yeah, I'm I'm all levels of bunged up. Still here though. Not in a good way. <laughs> but Can you be bunged up in a good way? Some people would say so. Okay. <laughs> but you're still here. You're still turned up. Yeah, it's going to be the best part of my day. Of course it is. Always is. So here we are. Absolutely. Uh, any gossip? Uh, what do you know? I don't know a lot this week. This week, I've just, I was just saying to you before we started, this week just seems to have happened. Yeah. That, that literally, does, it's like... It is like that sometimes. All of a sudden, it's Thursday, and I don't yeah. know where the week's gone. Yeah. So, but no, I've got nothing to report to you at all, really. I'm sorry. Okay. What about you? Um, I... I don't know if I can say this. Yeah. I don't like... I obviously <laughs> do not like to talk about my charity work. Obviously. But... I will be doing a bit of acting this weekend. Okay. Yeah. Some would say the role I was born to play. Right. Do you want to elaborate? or uh, Playing my namesake. Oh, okay. At this time Got of year. You. Okay. Interesting. The, the jolly man in red. I I, think, I can't think of anybody better to play a jolly I think this voice might actually help. Yeah, it probably will. So, it probably will. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, I'll get to... Uh, Give some presents out, yeah. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I will report back, I guess. Let us know I'm how quite, it goes. I'm quite looking Can we forward have some to photographs? It. I'm sure there'll be photographs. Oh, yeah. I need some photographs. I'm of sure this. there will. Um, you, your charity work is just endless. <laughs> you, you're like Bob Geldof. Our actual philanthropist. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. Just, it's nice to help out. Just a nice can. guy. Yeah. Uh, what do we do? This is the bottom of the stream of Adam and Nick. We usually start with a question of the week. I have a question of the week. You do. And it is video game related because there is okay. a good chunky piece of video games news oh. coming our way in the uh, in the news portion of the show. Exciting. So all we would like to know on the uh, the theme of video games, in real life, yeah. would you rather have the ability to fast travel to locations you've previously been to? Okay. Which is a pretty common thing in, in sort of yeah, open world happens. video games. Yeah. Or would you rather have a huge personal inventory without any of the weight? So it's the invisible the invisible backpack. rucksack that you would have in in a computer game. Okay, interesting question. Holding all your food and power ups and weapons and take whatever you need with you wherever yeah. you go. This is a good question. I think it's a no brainer. Do you? Yeah, I I think the fast travels game changer. I think fast travel for for <laughs> anyone who has a, a yes, I think it's right. <laughs> I, think it's... A, I was going to say normalish life who needs to go to places. Yeah, particularly ones that you have to go to multiple times. Yeah, surely this is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. I got stuck in traffic on the way home tonight. That wouldn't have happened to me. Yeah, you would just imagine the hours you would save. Yeah crazy but it has to it only you can't you can only not, be places you've been before exactly but i've been to new york yeah i've been to las vegas yeah, yeah you could pop back there been to thailand i yeah. could do that most places in america yeah yeah it's a no-brainer i, I think it's, it's well. an absolute no-brainer no work commute ever yeah i can be pretty much anywhere i want to be i've been to most places i want to be okay <laughs> i think and if I do want to go somewhere, I just go there, and then I can go there endless amounts of times. Oh, I suppose so. In the future, but even if you were, uh, you you use them as a jumping off point. Yeah. So you want to go? You've been to New York. Go to New York. Yeah. And then travel to. Yeah. Then I can go to wherever. Somewhere I was going to say Boston, but I've been to Boston as well. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a no-brainer that one. As much as what? the the invisible backpack. When would, be would cool. the invisible backpack be of use? Going on holiday. If you were. Uh, yeah, but it's no not luggage. Sort of that much of a paid to no it's not but you wouldn't have to check any bags or anything so would that be a drawback of your fast travel that you couldn't take anything with you that's true 
so you'd have to buy some pants every <laughs> time you <laughs> I don't think it's enough of a drawback. Could you fast travel with a bag? I think with what you've got yeah. Yeah. Probably not a huge suitcase. But it but... wouldn't matter because you just what you could do is fast travel there in the clothes you're wearing. Yeah. Take those off when you get to your hotel room. Yeah. Fast travel home. Put some more clothes on. Fast travel back. I see what you mean. Just, just, just yeah, okay. Pop back and forth to get whatever you need. Yeah. Well, that's true. You would need to pack because if you just you, come home, you got to Las Vegas and got invited to a, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the ambassador's dinner. Yeah. You just nip back home to get your tux. Like you could go on holiday and sleep in your own bed every night. Well, I suppose you could if you really wanted. To. <laughs> It's a no brainer. You could like, literally... I could rather go home and take a shit in my own, own don't need, toilet. I, don't, I can go on holiday. Don't even need to pay for a hotel. Yeah. I can go home, go away, spend a lovely day in Spain or wherever. Yeah. Come home, have go to bed, get up the next morning, back on holiday the next day. Yeah. It's a no brainer. <laughs> it's the easiest question you've ever asked me. Yeah, I, th- I agree. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I don't disagree whatsoever. No, I think that's, that's an easy one. Yeah. There isn't many situations where carrying more than I need. Is, would be helpful. Unless you were going hiking. Yes. Or something, or on an expedition, then then that would be tremendously useful. Yeah, because you wouldn't have to carry a bag with you. Old, uh, what's his name? Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption <laughs> 2. He's got his campsite in there. True. His tent. Yeah, he takes everything in there. All his steak. Yeah. Cans of beans. Everything. Yeah. All he can also fast travel. Plants. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. It's fast travel. It's easy. Good question, though. It's a good question. Good I answer. Really want it. That's the first one you I think now I really, really want, want, want yeah. that. <laughs> it would make my life so much better. Oh, so much easier and better. Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay. Shall we do some Netflix news? Ah, uh, let's do some news. And I just as way of another tease, some there is. A, I've left it pretty. I think right till the end. Something has finally happened that we have talked about. Wouldn't it be cool if this happened? Okay. And it's it's it's. I'm, I'm so excited for this news story. <laughs> right. I've left it right to the end. Oh, okay. Just tease. tease. You tease. Uh, so we will start with Netflix news. And it is news of, depending where you read it, a cancellation. Okay. Although the creator of the series says, well, we never did plan for any more than one series. So. Yeah. Do, do people always say that when they've. Been well, yeah, exa- exactly. Um, Netflix uh, have confirmed via. Brian Lee O'Malley, who was the co-developer, executive producer on Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Okay, the animated Scott yes, Pilgrim show. Yes, that it will not return. Oh, right. Uh, O'Malley wrote on, he X'd an X, saying, <laughs> we were recently informed that the show will not return. And then qualifies it by saying, as you know, we only intended it to be one season. <laughs> we weren't expecting to have to go back. And called in a lot of favours to make it happen. So making more would have been nearly impossible. I guess that's getting all well, those voice, voice actors back. back. Yeah. Still, I know some of you have been holding out hope. Uh, almost exactly a year ago. That Was it really? dropped on Netflix last wow. November. It's uh, a decent show. I don't think I watched it all. I'm just trying to think now. O'Malley continues. Do. It's self-contained. We love what we did. We put it all in there. We don't have any ideas lying on the floor. We pretty much put them all in. Uh, he then said uh, to Rolling Stone a bit later in the year, I never say never, but right now it seemed like it would take about 50 different miracles simultaneously <laughs> for another uh, season to happen. Sounds like he was hedging his bets a little. I guess if Netflix had come open, wallet open, yeah, it would have happened. Yeah. It sounds like he's not been lobbying for it either. It's not like he's got a niche pitch it. animation yeah. of a niche movie. Yeah. With a massive cast. Yeah. Who, that whole cast went Who on are to all become massive. famous and expensive now. Yeah. yeah. Feels like we should be lucky that we had it. <laughs> yeah, we should be lucky that we had the first season. Okay. Okay. Not not devastating. Uh, Netflix is getting sued. What for? By a Florida man. A Florida man? Yeah. What's Florida man been up to? Uh-huh. Florida man, uh, in fact, Ronald Blue Denton. <laughs> Great Florida man name. <laughs> this is his nickname. Is a Netflix subscriber who is suing them in Florida state court. He is seeking unspecified monetary damages and class action status on behalf of himself and other consumers who are affected by the poor <laughs> streaming gonna say this. feed. But on last week's uh, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight. Right, okay. Uh, the 
complaint alleges Netflix were woefully ill-prepared for the high demand and that the live stream was unwatchable because of the problems. Uh, Netflix has not yet responded uh, when asked for comment. Uh, the lawsuit says 60 million Americans were hyped to see Iron Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. What they saw was the baddest streaming on the planet. Ah. <laughs> uh, and the lawsuit also claims there are over 100,000 people complaining online about the technical issues. Uh, I mean, if there really were 60 million accounts trying to access it... It's not surprising what that could, it didn't work. What could, they, what could you have done? I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that's an excuse. No, the numbers I heard was that it peaked at 65 million all at once. Yeah. It's like, there isn't a, a single streaming service that could have coped with that. I heard another podcast... I, I know this is really there are the other only, podcasts the only podcast <laughs> uh, and another sports pod, a, a sports podcast okay. not a competitor, saying that they had heard tale they had heard tale they had heard tale of Netflix subscribers with a Netflix account because yeah. the streaming was glitching or whatever signing up for another Netflix account right in the hope that that would have a better that's going to make it worse exactly <laughs> and the guy who was pre- presenting the podcast said well, actually, thinking about it, I had three streams on the go because I was trying to watch it on my phone, my tablet, and my TV. Yeah, I'm not. If if it really, if the number truly is 65 million, then that makes me sad for the state of the world, and also, no streaming service would have coped with that. I don't think 65 million consecutive YouTube views is a thing. All at the same time, yeah, live as well. Yeah. Netflix turned it around. Their, their, their claim it was so successful it broke Netflix. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the pitch now. That's fine. I, d- I, ge- I genuinely I don't think it'll be there'll be any issue with the um, NFL stuff at Christmas. I don't Sorry. think there'll be any issue with the when the wrestling starts in January because they will they will all have a fraction fraction of the small st- fraction of the st- people trying to watch them live. The p- yeah, the the closest the, anything's going to get is possibly WrestleMania, and that's going to be nowhere near sixty five million. No, not even close. Not even maybe ten percent of it. Yeah, no, there's Christmas Day <laughs> NFL games. More yeah, like. they'll they'll be up there as well, but but, but not sixty five million. <laughs> it's raw live. It appeals to Americans watching it live. There's nobody in this country who's staying up. Not many that are going to stay up and watch it live. The fact that it's available to watch the next day is good enough for everybody over here. I think. And that, like you say, those NFL games, they're mainly going to be watched in America. You're not going to get nowhere near 65 million. That's, a, that's an insane number. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an insane but number. It's about a quarter of Netflix's yeah. total global yeah. subscribers. <laughs> it's, just, it's no wonder it crashed. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, I have an update on a previous news story on this okay. show. Uh, do you remember the pitch battle between netflix and the uh planning people in edinburgh over the proposed yeah one day plaque yeah oh, they wanted on the stairs for for, for they wanted the a red the, plaque from the tv show one day yeah yes. instead of the old blue plaques to uh yes mark that this was the location where dexter and emma from that show had their first kiss yes and that book uh well the results are in right the decision has been made and the application has been thrown out. Right, it's not happening. By city planners. Yeah. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, Netflix had applied for a red plaque with a quote from the show to be erected on the Venal Steps, uh, where the lead characters have their first kiss. Uh, and uh, the Edinburgh Council said that the application received 38 objections. <laughs> 38? Wow. And said the proposal fails to have special regard to the desirability of preserving the character of the building. And it, indeed, it would adversely impact its special architectural and historic interest. Okay. Down with Netflix tourism. <laughs> I wonder why they, they they bothered. What, trying? Yeah. For... The, people kissing TV shows all the time. Sure. <laughs> like... And and one day, as good as it was for, for the most part, 
It didn't exactly... It wasn't really a needle mover. No, it's Netflix. not like Netflix's biggest show, is it? Yeah. That feels publicity stuff yeah. to me. Just get some headlines, keep yeah. it in there. Keep it in the news. Maybe that'll appeal. Maybe it'll just roll we'll just up. Keep Maybe going. it'll just run forever. Maybe they want it to be there. <laughs> just put it there for one day, and then it's a one-day plaque for one day. And you, by wait, the wait. time it's gone, yeah. you, nobody will have known anyway. They should just put it there on that one day every year. Yeah. When the one day is about. Yeah. By the just time the plan has realised it's there, it's gone. <laughs> we'll just apply to have it one one out of the 365 days. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, then you get that, that day everybody will... Oh, yeah, you'd get congregate. everyone cosplaying, wouldn't you? Yeah. And snogging. Yeah. Proposing. There'd be yeah. all sorts of crap going on. Uh, back to the upcoming NFL Christmas, g- Christmas Day games on Netflix. Yep. They have uh, announced this week, Netflix have that... Taking a uh, page out of the Super Bowl's playbook, right? There will be a halftime show, right? On the I think it's the later game of the day. The Baltimore Ravens will play the Houston Texans. Okay. Any guesses on who the halftime performer will be? Is it somebody related to either of those two teams? Interrupting their Christmas, <laughs> so it must have been a. Put it this way: it must have been a big paycheck to get this person out of bed. Okay. Or or away from home on Christmas Day. I assume it's singer. Yes. Female. Yes. Uh, Adele No Gaga No Bigger Bigger than Gaga? Yeah Madonna No Beyonce Correct Oh really? Yeah Wow Wow Yes uh, it, The game takes place in Houston Right Obviously she's got that whole cowboy thing going on at the minute Yep true They must have cut her a massive God can you imagine? Massive check I imagine she gets it's massive like checks t- just for performing time anyway. on Christmas Day. Got at least, <laughs> at least, she must get massive checks just for performing well, on a normal would. day. Yeah, millions, tens of millions. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Who cares? Uh, yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. I'd love to know. I'd love to know how much have they put a hand in their pocket for there. Same. But if you're interested, yeah, that's the second game of the day. So you have a, so these are um, US times, so uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, 1 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. on okay. the two Christmas Day NFL games on Netflix. So like early to late evening here then. Yeah, so like six o'clock and half nine, Yeah, if that's your thing. Okay, we have a bit of a roundup on some upcoming Netflix games next. Right, okay. Uh, and a little, just before Christmas, pre-Christmas present for anyone who's interested, interested is that the news that Squid Game Unleashed will arrive on December the 17th. Okay. A new trailer is available now, and this is kind of like uh, Netflix's version of I always forget the name of this Four game. Four guys. Four guys. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to forget um, it. Yeah, it's like a massive multiplayer, hundred people all at once playing yeah. a game. Uh, just what? Strongest ten survived. days ahead of the re- premiere of season two of Squid Game, yeah. which arrives on Boxing Day. It's coming around really quickly. That is. It really is. Also coming is Ted Tumble Tumble Words. Ted Tumble Words. Yeah. Okay. As in, I think it's like, as in the TED Talks. Right. Uh, this is a daily word game. Oh, like Wordle. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Which really makes me think, well, how's it took yeah, Netflix three years long to get surely. on this, <laughs> this train? Uh, it is a daily word game where you must rearrange, rearrange rows of random letters on a grid to create new connections and spell the longest words you can. Okay. Uh, build word chains and use letter based bonuses to maximise your score okay I uh, that's available now actually I've tried I played uh, a couple of weeks ago and I've been back to it a few times Squirtle Squirtle that's quite good what's that so you have a square of letters and you it tells you there are 40 ways to find Right. And you can link them and it's okay. really tricky because there's like some of them are four letter words and occasionally you have like a 13 letter word there to find. Right. Okay. Do you know, there's a, do Wordle? There's a Wordle VR game. Is that? <laughs> I've seen it. I've not played it, but I've seen it on there the other day when I was playing VR. Feels a bit right. extra, but. Yeah. It does a bit. Uh, 
So imagine the... you're just in a room with a big screen Nothing in front pictures. of you. Sure, the yeah. word long. Uh, for fans of the Netflix stories seasons uh, okay, yeah. of games, you there is a new Virgin River game. Right. Uh, Virgin River Christmas. Nice. It's, it's available now, just been released this week. As is, I think I I, I mentioned this to you off air, a sequel uh, to a game we've done on this show, The Rise of the Golden Idol. I no, I was looking for a game for our feature later on and I noticed it was on there already. Uh, which was... One, we we did the curse of the golden eye. We did, which was very difficult. Very very difficult. It's a nice throwback. Yeah. I don't think I'll be going back to that world though. To be <laughs> uh, December the third, you can have a go at another Netflix stories game, A Perfect Couple. Right. You They're are... very much appealing to a, an audience with these games. Would you like to know the synopsis of yes, a perfect couple, perfect couple? You're a bridesmaid in Nantucket's wedding of the summer. No. Oh. But when the maid of honor turns up dead, oh, no. your dream weekend turns into a deadly game of Cluedo. Okay. Uh, you'll be put up at Summerland, the picturesque home of the Winber is a wealthy and influential family. So pack your best outfits and catch the ferry ready for an unforgettable weekend. Can you solve the murder before you become the next victim? Okay. We weren't a big fan of the Netflix stories games. and They, they very much feel like they're marketed at one particular audience those things get churned out yeah. at a rate of knots man yeah uh december the 5th yeah arrives civilization six okay build sprawling cities invest in cultural progress and forge alliances or wage war the world is yours to lead in this classic strategy game i played civilization six on the pc yeah and it's very complicated <laughs> and it lasted about 10 minutes before i was like this is too much right <laughs> yeah well now you so. can try and play that on your phone <laughs> yeah can't imagine what it must be like on a phone. Uh, big one, another big release for Netflix games, December the tenth, Monument Valley three. Oh yeah, that is a big one. Uh, I'm surprised neither of us have picked Monument Valley for the. Uh, I've looked at it a couple of times. Yeah, I have as well, but never picked it. Not gone for it. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Quite a few uh, games either just arrived or coming in December. Cool. To Netflix. It's, it's really funny that Netflix games is getting bigger and bigger, and nobody knows it exists. <laughs> And it's it's it doesn't feel like it's catching on. No, it doesn't to me. I'd love some figures on who, how many of Netflix's account holders are playing games. I think we did get those figures right at the start. Did we? Or something like that. Or the number of downloads. Number for of downloads some per thing. Yeah. I mean, I think the fact that we've not <laughs> we've not seen any figures might might be a bit of something. a clue, given how Netflix does I, like a metric. I genuinely don't think people know they're there. I've never seen an advert. Nor have I. For them. No. How, I don't, I'm not 100% sure how many people watch Netflix on a phone. Like how many people use the phone app. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure you, on that. You, play, you obviously played the one that was on your TV. Yeah. But how did you find only, that? It worked really well, but there's only like five of them on yeah. there. So it's very well, much a phone-based could thing. You, but was that on your on your your TV Netflix app? Yes. Okay. Because I'm trying to think now. I'll have to go and have a look when I get home. I can't remember seeing a pitch or a thumbnail for any Netflix games on my TV. It was quite... You know when you get like... They do top 10 movies, <laughs> yeah, top 10 yeah. films, and there's loads of different categories. It was quite far down the categories. But the icons are a different shape. Yeah. They're not like movie poster shape. They're like square. Yeah. So it, it was quite easy to see once they were there. Okay. But there's only like four or five of those. But on the phone apps now, there's loads. I remember when we sat here talking about the first four game released. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now there's, there must be over 100 now. Yeah, yeah 100%. And there's some big name games in there. Like You've got Grand Theft Autos in there. You've yeah. got Football Managers in there. Monument Valley's in there. Yeah, there's, Civilization's, a, Civilization's big one, a big one. So, yeah. I genuinely just don't think people use their phone up and know that no. the games are there. Uh, let's talk for a bit about upcoming director... Steven Spielberg. Okay, yeah. I've he, heard of him. <laughs> he, uh, both he and Christopher Nolan, who we will talk about shortly, are have something in common at the minute. They are putting good casts together for their next movies, of which we know nothing about. Right, secret movies. Very much. Plot details completely under wraps. Okay. We do know that Steven Spielberg's uh, next movie is going to be uh, released by Universal, and it has a release date of May the 15th, 2026. Okay. So we've got like 18 months away. And that's a pretty big 
summer, early summer blockbuster. Yeah. And we also know that signed up to star in this movie are Emily Blunt, uh, Josh O'Connor, Colin Firth, Coleman Domingo, and Eve Hewson. It's a pretty good cast. Yeah, it's a big cast. Uh, Spielberg came up with the story right. himself, and the script has been written by David Coep, who has done quite a few of Spielberg's recent movies. Yeah. Uh, what the hell is that going to be about? God knows. We thought Spielberg might have been done with the movies. Yeah. Well, he'd be the basically, Fablemans. when the Fablemans came out, he basically was like, this is it, I'm done. I think he said, if this was my last, I would be happy. Yeah. Not, this is my last, I'm happy. Maybe he's yeah. not happy. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't happy with it. But I thought the Fablemans was fantastic. Fablemans too. <laughs> Maybe. There's room for a sequel there. Avengers was... of Fablemans. <laughs> Cause if the Fable, no spoilers, but the Fableman finishes when Spielberg gets his first job in the film industry. So it's like, but there is a scope for hey. the story of Spielberg as a film director. Uh, similarly, I'm going back to Christopher Nolan. Okay. We talked last week that the cast he was building for his next movie, yep. also unknown uh, as to its subject, is includes Matt Damon, Tom Holland, Anne Hathaway, Lupita Nyong'o, and Zendaya. Added to that cast just this week is none other than Robert Pattinson. Okay. So quite the cast coming together. Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson have worked together before. They did that one on Netflix, the long one. What's it called? Devil All the Time. Devil All the Time. They were both in that. Uh, According to Hollywood Reporter, sources (laughs) say that Matt Damon, Tom Holland... Anne Hathaway and Pattinson are the core leads of the feature film, with the others in supporting roles. Okay. Uh, they also sort of say, we joked about it last week, I think. They address the rumours that some people have said this is going to be a vampire movie. Yeah. And also the rumours that some people have said this is going to be an action movie about helicopters. <laughs> oh yeah, we did have the helicopter movie discussion. They do, Hollywood reports say, insiders are now saying that none of these ideas have come close to nailing what this movie is actually about. Okay, interesting. Uh, Vampires in helicopters, I reckon. Sure. Do they need them? Yeah. Helicopters that are van- vampires. Oh. It's like Christine, <laughs> but they fly and suck your blood. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> I'm up for that. Cool. I, I won't say hidden for that long. No, more on this as it comes. Uh, James Bond joining the DC Cinematic Universe, anyone? Okay. Uh, Why not? Well, it might be happening because fresh off their, well, about to be released uh, movie, Queer, uh, Daniel Craig and director Luca Guadagino, who also recently uh, was directed, well, maybe last year now, Challengers, the tennis movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they are, uh, like I say, they've, Queer is coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks. They want to carry on working together. Okay. Because they are both circling, according uh, to Deadline, a an adaptation of Sergeant Rock right. for the DC Cinematic Universe under James Gunn's leadership. Uh, Sergeant Franklin John Rock. Uh, debuted in DC Comics in 1959. He, he is a World War II soldier. Uh, sound familiar? <laughs> um, he isn't infused with any super soldier serum. Right. Uh, but uh, he is able to shoot down planes with a single machine gun and lob grenades with deadly precision. Okay. He is uh, an uber soldier. Right. Slash DC Comics superhero. How does that work in the modern day? Don't know. You could do is he period, like, you could do imagine if he's piece. really old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like maybe he'd be frozen. A hundred year old superhero. And a man out of time. Yeah, maybe. Wonder where they got that idea from. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Just like he's a veteran. Yeah, it's like a hundred year old dude who's just yeah. like well Still good at amazing. shooting planes down. So, yeah, well, you've sold it to me. I'm fine with that. Cool. Um your yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, really. 
struggle to get up for this uh, DC stuff. Yeah, but. same. And I've never been a big Daniel Craig fan either. Yeah. So, uh, Deadline has an exclusive this week. Deadline can say they've got exclusives all they want, but we steal them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we credit them, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, they have uh, revealed an uh, upcoming movie, well, a, a movie that's almost in the can, actually, and it's looking for a, for a sort of investment to dis- for distribution. Okay. Along the same lines as Blood and Honey. Right. Is a horror movie version of a character that is out of copyright. Right. I will tell you the name of this movie and I'm going to try and judge if you are interested <laughs> or not. I think I will be. Popeye the Slayer Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, it will explore... Popeye's out of copyright. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Wow. It will explore an alternate backstory for the legendary sailor and is aiming for a 2025 release. The film follows a group of friends who sneak into an abandoned spinach canning factory. <laughs> To film a documentary on the legend of the sailor man who is said to haunt the factory and local docks. Uh, 100%. <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty much in the can. Uh, producer Jeff Miller said, We can't wait for audiences to get a load of this gory and scary version of Popeye. We went old school and focused on using real practical effects. Not relying on CG for the gore. We're talking with very enthusiastic and interested buyers now. I wonder if it can we get that in part of, of part of the uh, twisted childhood universe that what's its building? <laughs> Forgotten his name, Reese somebody. Maybe. Twenty twenty five is going to be mental. <laughs> That's Pinocchio, Peter Pan, yeah. Bambi, another Winnie the Pooh, yeah, well, the Avengers Assemble, whatever one it's called, and now Popeye. Yeah. Twenty twenty five is the <laughs> year of bottom of the three movies. I'm telling you. And the final news story of the week is news that a movie we have covered on bottom of the stream okay is getting a hollywood remake no way way wow finally happened <laughs> it's finally happened yeah. we've we've elevated this movie <laughs> to the point where it needs a remake do oh, you... can i have some clues can i try and guess will okay. i guess it what do you want to yeah you can do, i can give you a clue go on do you want to know sort of where this movie is from in the world yes uh, it's a scandinavian movie okay horror it's tell me it's not red dot it's not red dot <laughs> okay, no good. i would say horror comedy horror comedy yeah how recently have we done this i'd say within the last three seasons three or three or four don't know. The trip. Oh, okay. It's having a holiday. A, a holiday. Ho- a Hollywood. <laughs> the remake. trip's having a holiday. <laughs> do you remember really? the trip? Okay, yeah, it's I do the remember the trip. Newbie rapace where the the couple went to a cabin. Yeah. Unbeknownst yeah. to each other, both were both with the plan to kill, kill each, each other. other. And there was a load of escaped convicts who got mixed up in it. Came and in and got involved in the plan. Yeah. Lots of goriness film? and stupidness. Uh, yeah, in six in season seven. There you go. Um, it is going to be directed by Yorma Takone, who is part of the Lonely Island comedy group with Andy Samberg and uh, Akiva Schaefer. Okay, so they're the guys who did Magruber, uh, Pop Star Never Stop Stopping, <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's four leads are in place. Really, already? Yes. Jason Segal. Right. Uh, in in a huge meta bottom of the stream type, everything comes full circle. <laughs> Samira Weaving. Right. Uh, Timothy Oliphant. Right, okay. And Juliette Lewis. They're, I feel like they're going for a different vibe <laughs> to the trip. Uh, all signed up for this. Okay. Uh, it has just started shooting. All right. Um, so yeah feels this is it's going to be slightly more comedy than the trip was good but it, was it funny I don't remember it being too yeah, funny yeah it was played it was, it was there was a lot of sort of the there comic some scenes were quite violent though weren't they until the the point where the it was quite comedy until they had that attempted rape scene yes. in the basement I was thinking there's a really like... dark scene in there and yes you're right where she had to beg for her husband to not be raped, not by, be raped the, by the bloke, yeah. Yeah. I can't see Jason Segel doing that. 
<laughs> Maybe they'll cook up it. Maybe, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, that's the first bottom of the stream remake, isn't it? I think so. It's got to be. Yeah. How exciting. Yeah. Red, that's, red, that's red letter day. That. Red letter day. That's, that's down to us. We should get some sort of credit on that. Sure. Uh, that's all the news. <laughs> Good news. Well done. Well done for getting through it. <laughs> you really Fine. look like you've struggled with it towards the end. Thanks. Have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? I've only really watched a couple of things. Okay. It's been a busy week. I've watched the first... I don't even know what number of episodes they are. I've <laughs> described them, but I think I've described them wrong, as Cobra, Sa- Cobra Kai Season 6 Part 2 Episodes 1 and 2. Right, that's fair. So it's the second half of the final season. No, 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 no not no. the final season. It's the, the second, second third, third of, of the, the final, final season. season. How many more episodes have just come out? I don't know. Okay, so maybe six, six, four. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't to be honest, I'd completely forgotten until yesterday, and I was—I haven't watched them yet. Yeah, I'd completely forgotten they were coming. So, yeah, any good worth watching? I mean, it's straight into the old Saikai Taikai tournament. Yeah, we left it at the Saikai Taikai. Yeah, we? so that is that is now underway. Right, it's just—it's fucking—it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's such it's a ridiculous, still ridiculous show. I'm still not over the fact that uh, how horrible they were to. Tori, yeah. after her mum died, and now they're all like, why has she gone to Cobra Kai? It's <laughs> so, so... I, I, I think we said this about part one, but I really feel... I'm glad that it is finishing, because they are really pushing this... How soapy can we make it yeah. and still get away with being a reasonably respectful programme? Do you think it's jumped the shark a little bit? Do you think it's like almost out-crazying itself now every week to try and push itself to that next yeah. level because it's like they, they have this huge introduction speech to the tournament and the the director of the tournament is like this is your key to worldwide fame and <laughs> there's like there's all this you have to go and talk to all the sponsors and this you your dojo could be famous and i'm like god's sake it's not like microsoft are queuing up to talk to <laughs> we've said it before karate dojo we've said it and- again in that world, karate is the most important <laughs> yeah. thing in that world. I think that's to everybody you, in the world. That is exactly how you've got to watch it. That this is in an alternate universe. Yes, where the most important thing to anyone in the world, any like literally it's the in the biggest world, sport, the it's yeah. yeah. And these kids from the valley are the best in the world at that. Yeah, but it's but only karate done by what I don't know, thirteen to. 18 year old yeah that's all that really matters so presumably karate just stops after stops after that then that you become age. a car salesman or a bum yeah yeah or a psychopath yeah it's, it's very it's, very specific it's a strange universe but it really is really it really works for yeah. some reason but you're right i think it has run its course now so and the way they're dragging this final season we've said it before but the way they're dragging I this final netflix season, have done it no flavor no, no favors, favors by splitting it into three parts no not at all dragging it out over this year and next year yeah <laughs> whenever the third part well, yeah third we don't even know when that's or... coming do it yet yeah. no okay i i don't genuinely think i've watched anything this week okay considering last week i'd watched like eight films or whatever it was sure i haven't watched any films this week at okay. all i haven't watched any tv i don't really know where this week. i've told you i don't know what's happened where i've been this week dude it happens don't worry i don't about know it. what's happened i don't know what i've been doing or what, what's been going on with my it's life fine. but yeah i genuinely haven't got anything that i've been watching I've, I've watched the latest season of the new Frasier. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because that's just finished its second yeah. season. How how would you find it? It's funny. It's a funny show. It's it feels like I'm watching Frasier. Yeah. Because it's like Kelsey Grammer's great as Frasier. Nicholas Lindhurst's great as uh, his mate Alan. Yeah. He's brilliant. The the supporting cast are great, and then Ros has come back for this season oh, as well. Cool. So we've got like a another old face. Yeah, it's just it's just free show. It's fun. Kelsey Graham's got to pay for all those wives somehow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's nice to see Nicholas Linter's like career resurgence. Yeah, because he's he's really good. He is really good in it. Cool. To be fair. But yeah, that's what I've been watching that one. I'm like got nothing else to do. I've been watching a lot more. Um, I'm actually on Dropout. Oh yeah, I'm still watching that. I'm on like season six now. Cool. So but that's really good. But yeah, over the I've watched really... a couple of things that I'll drop out this week actually. I've I started the latest season of Make Some Noise. Okay. And then I watched which I will recommend if anyone has got a drop out. Uh I think it's called Zaki and Ali. Right. And it's an improv special. Okay. Led chiefly by Ali Bersley and oh, really Zach that. Oyama. Right. But 
with support from other people from Dropout. Uh, they're two of my favourites on Dropout as well. So I definitely they, and they do. Out. It's a bit like, um, yeah, it's just an improv thing. Take some words from the audience and yeah. they do a couple of sort of little is it good? plays. Yeah, it is good. Oh, the, well, they, they, so it's, I think it's about 45 minutes long and they do two. Right, two, like two sets. Two skits or whatever. And I did prefer the first one, but uh, yeah, they were good. They okay, were good. I would definitely check that out. So they're, they're two of my favourites on there, yeah. so that'd be great. Okay, cool. Right. What do you want to do now? Shall we do Caught in the Net? Let's do Caught in the Net, then we'll go through the top tens, because we haven't done that for a few yep. weeks, and then that'll do, shall it? It shall. <laughs> shall it. Caught in the Net, our weekly games feature yes. at the bottom of the stream. As we mentioned earlier on, Netflix have games on their mobile phone app. They do. Which not many people know about. And week by week, we're alterna- alternating who's picking the game. Then we're playing the game for a bit and letting you know what we thought about it. And yes. then we've got a little table that we're putting the games in. We have. And uh, this week it was my turn to choose. And I choose I did. You did choose. <laughs> I went for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yep. Shredder's Revenge. Yeah. Proper throwback game. Yeah. Really, really real throwback. Like a new version of one of the classic side-scrolling arcade. Ninja Turtle arcade games. Yeah, absolutely. It really felt like that vibe. It's got that sort of art style to it yeah even the character select screen i think is the same as it was on that game yeah I, it's it's good this was a good one i was pleasantly surprised how well this translated yeah. to mobile phone I, so I wasn't sure if it would yeah but it was a tremendous fun yeah sometimes i feel like the buttons get in the way on a phone game yeah because it's like there's you've obviously got your five buttons on one side of the screen i really remember when we played other. katana zero yeah and you could i've never seen it before you could shrink and mm. size the around buttons. and whatever yeah, yeah um these ones are quite large and yes. they do get in the way a little bit but but who's your character of choice uh i i really i haven't played, probably spent as much time as i would like to but i know i will continue to play it uh but it was I had to go with uh, Leonardo yeah. and then Raphael. Because you can change as you go yeah. through. Every time it loads up, it asks you to choose yeah. someone. You just carry on from where you left yeah. off. I started with Michelangelo. Nice. And then I did a little bit with Splinter. Oh, well, yeah, I didn't try him. Because there's there's, a, there's not only the turtles, there's Splinter, there's yeah. April O'Neil, yeah. there's another person I've never heard of. Yeah. And all the... Yeah, I, I, I had a lot of fun with it. And even the cutscenes are like... Could they just... Yeah. 16 bit like it's retro aren't it's they? old school our turtle our era our era turtles as it's well the, it's not like the new no it's updated the, graphics one it's the 80s 90s yeah cartoon yeah version of the turtles yeah and it does feel like and it is exactly the same as that side scrolling arcade from our youth yeah i, I had a lot of fun with it. I how really many what was it. the most combos you got hit, number of hits without getting hit i can't remember it was so you, you get a hit counter you do, yeah, strikes yeah. counter i want to say it was in the 60s okay i can't remember but yeah. it was in the 60s, cool. I think. But yeah. th- th- I got to the third... Ep- they call them episodes. Yeah. I got to the third one, and it's you're on a skateboard, and you're constantly moving, and yes, I avoiding that. obstacles, yeah. and that's really tough. Yeah. That was, uh, that was really... The first two levels, I was like, this is a bit easy, but that third one's quite tough. Yeah. I've got to the boss of that, but I've not finished it yet. Okay, cool. But yeah, it was, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought you, you picked well there. I would just, definitely keep playing it. I just think. fun. Just, yeah. I think I'll keep playing. Bit of a throwback. Mm. So I did. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I enjoyed Me it. Me too. Should we stream table it? Let's do it. Do you want me to read out what we've got in the stream table so far? Uh, do you want to do all of them or have you got an idea um, where this is going? I've got an idea where it's going. Okay. Do you want me to do the top 10? Yeah, I think, it, we, I think sure we think in the top 10. 10. Yeah. So currently, this is the 18th game of the season, but currently in number 10 is Asphalt Extreme. And number nine is The Curse of the Golden Idol. Eight, Game Dev Tycoon. Seven, Stranger Things Puzzle Tales. Six, Minesweeper. Five, Before Your Eyes. Four, Slay Away Camp 2. Three, Pinball Masters. Two, Valiant Hearts. And number one currently is Katana Zero. What are you thinking? I'm open to discussion, but my instant reaction is, well, we did Minesweeper last week. Yeah. I think I had more fun than that. Okay. So it's top six. (laughs) I'm uh, quite a bit higher than you on this. That, no, that's my starting point. <laughs> I think it's fighting for the number one spot. Yeah, I don't think it's quite. It might be there. It's a. It, it's there's something it's about how easy it is to pick up and play. Yeah, and, and it might be the nostalgia throwback that I'm getting from it. Yeah, I think it's better than Valiant Hearts. I had it around that region. Yeah, I I think you know Slayaway Camp, Pinball Master, Valiant Hearts, they and Katana Zero then 
they're the best four they're the best four easily yeah and is in the conversation this is in the conversation the i think it's a better game than valiant hearts yeah which puts it in the top two and katana zero is really difficult yes it is (laughs) oh screw it let's put it at the top do you think yeah i think so i genuinely think it's the most fun i've had on any of these games. it just looks great doesn't it it does and it's and it might be the nostalgia vibes and the throwback vibes to it, but who cares? It's my show. After, <laughs> you know, it, and it is the antithesis of Farming Simulator, which yeah. was just, I don't know what I'm doing here. And yeah. you could just pick up and play it. And it was... That's what I want from a mobile game. Yeah. I might really enjoy Farming Simulator on my PC if I can yeah, sit yeah, down and take some time and play it. Yeah. But it, that's not what I'm looking for from a mobile game. No. So I think it's the best game we've played, genuinely. I yeah. Go for it, man. Sweet. Number one. New number one. Right, my turn to pick next week's game. Yes. Um, I've kept with the same kind of vibe that you went for. Okay, cool. So I've gone a bit retro, and I've also gone adventure action-y type game. Yeah. So we're going to play Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed. Oh, nice. So there's a Lego game that's appeared on Netflix, right? Have you ever played any of the Lego adventure games? I would have played some of the sort of... uh franchised ones so like the star the wars lego star wars. harry potter lego so i think this is the similar vibe to that but with no set franchise yeah it's i think it's just well i'll read you this this synopsis it says captain redbeard princess storm or hot dog man assemble a dream team of minifigs to explore battle enemies and build sets in this fun adventure game it also has a multiplayer mode so we cool. could play it with each other if okay we nice <laughs> um so yeah i thought we'd just stick with the same vibe and uh, build some Lego and have some fun with some Lego. I am on board. I didn't know there was a Lego no? game on Netflix. So no, not at all. It is there. Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed. Cool. So we can play that this week. We'll Good. We'll let you know next week I'm what excited. we thought of it. Right, where are we at time-wise? Okay, should we quickly run through the Netflix top tens? We've sure. not done that for a while. If you can't see a screen, so I'll just read them through for you. But you've, I think you feel like you've done enough talking in this episode. It's my turn. Do you want films or TV shows first? Uh, let's go films. Films. Okay, I think there's a vibe here. Okay. Number 10 in the films currently is The Christmas Chronicles. The um... I'll stop you there. Okay. <laughs> my family was watching that movie as I left my house oh, really? to come over here. So... It's a really good movie. Yeah, it is. The first one's really... The second one isn't as good, but the first one's really good. Um, Number 10... Uh, number 9, sorry. The Buckingham Murders. Right. Ever heard of it? No idea. Same. Number eight, Return of the King, The Fall and Rise of Elvis Presley. I assume this is some sort of documentary on Elvis. I guess so. I'll check with my mum. She might have watched it. She loves Elvis. Number seven, Paddington 2. Oh, okay. Did not know that that was up there. It's good the third one's just come out, hasn't it? Yeah. And number six, The Lost Children. Don't know what that is. The poster looks really weird. It's like there's loads of kids under a blue light in a wood. Okay. So, we're thinking horror movie or doc i wasn't sure in my I head know. i was like it's, documentary or i'm thinking some sort of i'm thinking alien movie just by this vibe of this poster but i could be completely wrong it could be a documentary for i know i don't know and number five ready or not okay have you seen ready or not uh i uh, no i don't think i have it's good you should check it out is it tomorrow evening yeah again yeah the, she's the screen queen of this this decade they, they play like game hide and seek through the night and Different I th- games I think in I a might mansion. Have seen it. It's a really good for yeah. I really enjoyed it, Ready or Not. It's new to Netflix, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just come onto Netflix. Number four, 24 Hours in Aldi. Okay. That's a <laughs> Which movie. is a documentary okay. about working in Aldi for the day. And that's better than Paddington 2, according <laughs> to Netflix viewers. Uh, number three, Alita Battle Angel. Okay. James Cameron was going to direct that for years and years and years, and then he didn't because he got into making blue movies. <laughs> blue <And> movies. <laughs> so I think Robert Rodriguez directed it. Okay. It's like you—you you must see the trailer and stuff. They, they, all the people have got weirdly creepy big eyes in it. And, yeah. Yeah. Looking at this post, so she's got fake arms. Yeah. Uh, number two is Meet Me Next Christmas. Okay. Another Christmas film. Sure. And number one is Hot Frosty. I've heard about Hot Frosty. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, and I think I I am pretty sure it's going to get watched at some point over the next few weeks in my house. What? And I will watch it. What's the vibe? 
basically, I, I, to my understanding, a, sno- a family makes a snowman and it comes to life to be a hot man. Okay, there is a hot man in this yeah. poster, so... Yeah. Okay. I think it's like if Jack Frost modelled Calvin Klein. Got you. <laughs> I probably will avoid it, but if okay, you could let us fine. know how it is, sure. that'd be that'd be great. Uh, TV shows in the UK? Yes, please. Currently at number ten is Clean Sweep season one. Um, I don't know what that is. There's some police tape, and it's not in English. I think it's in French. Okay. Uh, number nine, The Cage season one. That's about cage fighting. Nice. Number eight, The Diplomat, season two. Really? Yeah. I did I, not know that was out. I know we've not done the charts for all. No, I, did, I, I knew it was out. I'm just surprised it's only at number eight. Yeah, it's number eight. Uh, number seven, Arcane, season two. Right. Is that the one that got cancelled recently? Pass. I think it got cancelled recently. Uh, number six, Outer Banks, season four. Oh, people love Outer Banks. Isn't this they? the final? Is this the final season of Outer Banks? Uh, no, I think it's been renewed. It still going? I think it's been renewed. People love that show. Yeah, they do. Uh, number five is My Wife, My Abuser, caught on camera, season one. Oh, there's some festive uh, viewing for you. <laughs> it's got the Channel Five logo. So oh, right, this okay. is a Channel Five documentary that's made it into the Netflix top nice. five. Um, it's about a man who is abused by his wife. Number four is Temple, season one. Right. That's Mark... Strong. Strong. I was going to say Frost, but that's not right. <laughs> Mark Strong. That's a Sky original TV show. That has somehow made it onto Netflix. Okay. Number three, Cobra Kai, season six. Number three. <laughs> you'll You'll realise why pretty soon. <laughs> uh, number two is Countdown, Paul versus Tyson. Oh, okay. And number one is Paul versus Tyson. I suppose it's a TV show. <laughs> is it a TV show? It's a sporting is, event. We need interesting, a new chart. We need a new chart. Yeah. Because. It's not a TV show. No, it, it makes you wonder if like Raw and Smackdown and things are going to get into this TV charts. Or, or uh, maybe not get into, but are eligible for these charts yeah. every Monday and Friday and whatever. It is a sports chart. I'm not having that. Yeah. Best TV show on the. I assume it's not the live show. Maybe it's the rewatches that's being well, charted. It'll be, it'll be on that time of that week, won't it? So it will be both. Yeah, I guess so. Does, would that not put that right up in the top chart? Well, they, 65 million I, people I, watching. How many hours was it on for? Yeah, but <laughs> so, how, many, how many hours did they actually manage to watch? <laughs> look, there is that. Look, we, we, yeah, I, feel, I don't want to tread the old ne- how the Netflix count beans yeah, true. conversation again. Fair. Right, should we do a different country? Sure. Um, movies in... Stop me. Stop. Finland. Oh, nice. Number 10, Minions, The Rise of Gru. Oh, it's always well. a minion. always a minion in the charts. Doing well in Finland. Number 9, Christmas Under Wraps. Another Christmas movie that didn't chart in this country. And number 8, 65. That's the Adam Brody caught in the long time ago time oh, travel movie uh, where he's yeah, like yeah. Adam Brody versus dinosaurs yeah. is it Adam Brody Adam no. Driver Adam Driver I always get those two mixed up number seven Return of the King The Fallen Rise of Elvis Presley number six Ready or Not number five Let's Go hmm how do I describe this poster to you there's a family in a kitchen right the child the boy there's a boy he looks quite young he looks like a bit of a robot and he's doing this with his arm okay and then there's a girl on a phone, and the mum and dad look really scared, and dad's got elf like ears. <laughs> I just, I'm I don't know what's very going on. Uh, number four, The Lost Children. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Number three, Alita Battle Angel. Yeah. Number two, Hot Frosty. Yeah. And number one, Meet Me Next Christmas. Oh, that's switched that's over true. in Finland. Yes, yeah, there's loads of hot snowmen in Finland. Yeah, of course there is. There's like every Finnish on, guy. All Finnish guys, hot exactly. men in Finland. Yeah. Right, let's see if Paul and Tyson's number one in this country okay. as well. Where we stop him? Stop me when you when you want to. Stop. Maldives. TV in the Maldives. Number ten, the Great Indian Capital Show, season two. Oh, that's that's better than season one. <laughs> Number nine, Cobra Kai, season six. Cobra Kai hadn't tried in Finland. That's interesting. Yeah, you're right. Oh no, it was a TV. That was movies. Oh yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Number eight, Arcane, season one. Uh, number seven, Danda Dan. Oh, yeah. Love that show. (laughs) Number six, Banks Under Siege limited series. 
looks like a bank robbery show. I oh, right. Okay. I was still thinking it after Banks. Uh, number five, Young Sheldon, season seven. Okay. Number four, Mr. Plankton, limited series. Yeah. That's not about the guy from SpongeBob. Oh, goddamn. Uh, it's, it's just a couple in, looks like Tokyo. Not looking at each other. Homer Homer Simpson taking up fishing. (laughs) I'm Mr. Plow. Uh, Number three is Arcane Season 2. Yeah. Arcane does well in the Maldives. Number two, Outer Banks Season 4. Number one, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I'm pretty sure that's going to be number one in every country I pick. Let me just quickly choose a few random ones. I think it would be. Yeah, it's even in Q8. Well, it's not in Mauritius. The Cage Season 1 is in Mauritius. Okay. Well done, Mauritius. Number two in Mauritius. Yeah, every other country I'm looking at is. Right. Cool. Happy? Very. Done another bite bottom of the stream of Adam and Nick? All done? We sure have. You got yourself through it. Well done. All we really need to talk about is what we're watching on Thursday. We do. Come back on Thursday. You find us anywhere you find your podcast as we talk about a uh, a Japanese movie. Yeah. Selected by one of our patrons for Tis a Wild Card Choice. It is. Uh, by the... Great Ross Cook. Uh, we are watching Lumberjack the Monster. We are. And I'm excited to talk I'm about really it. I'm really excited to talk about it. I've got a lot to say about it. Okay. It's going to be an interesting show, I think. So, uh, yeah, come back to listen to our... We don't do the video show, the movie show on YouTube, but come to all the podcast apps and you will find it. And do what you can on YouTube, like, subscribe, ding the bell, do all that sort of stuff, tell your nan. And we'll be back on Thursday with our podcast on that movie. Cheers. Bye.